All right. We're about to get started, guys. Um, again, thank you for attending today's Mastering Market Site Session 10. And again, we're going to be reviewing the stat testing that occurs in cross tabs and kind of how to handle some of the different scenarios. Uh, more specifically, if you want a rough agenda of what we'll be covering, we're going to be co going over how to change your different confidence levels um, and make p-value adjustments, the different statistics display options that you have, the different types of tests that you can do, so pairwise and contrast testing, uh, how to handle your weighted data, and the stat testing conditions to be aware of uh, if you're going to be using things like multiple response variables or grid variables. And the final thing we'll cover is less related to stat testing, but just kind of an underutilized function uh, that can usually help you identify proportion differences is indexing. So just jumping right into the market site platform here, I already have a pre-selected and pre-built cross tab. So the first thing that we're going to review uh, before we actually get into any of the actual adjustments that you can make is just uh, being aware of the different types of stat tests that MarketSite will do. So basically, because MarketSite does automatic stat testing, you are actually going to get a different uh, set of tests depending on what values are going to be displayed uh, or depending on the different criteria um, for those given variables. By default, MarketSite typically runs uh, Z proportion tests and specifically two proportion z-tests uh, that are two-tailed. Uh, if you turn on things like means, you'll ultimately get a t-test. Um, and in circumstances where you have relatively low cell counts, uh, basically you'll get a Fisher exact test. Something else to be aware of is a chi-squared test will also run on your column and row variables. So that's actually what the pink bar typically indicates if you have color displays on um, your cross tabs. Uh, something else to be aware of is just that market site typically does not run tests in circumstances where you have unequal variances in your column variables. And again, uh, just be aware that the calculation and display options that you select ultimately can affect uh, the stat testing that occurs. There are also different thresholds for when uh, different stat tests occur. So basically, if you find that a stat test is not running, it's probably because overall the sample size and cell counts are relatively low. So just kind of going over something more specific, um, we'll go over where to kind of see the different displays for the different tests here. So again, this pink bar here actually indicates the results of your chi-squared test, and it would indicate significance. So if I actually hover over this cell, it's telling me that a chi-squared test was run, um, and I got a value of p is less than 0 0.0005. You can actually adjust the different confidence level cutoffs by using this drop down here. And your different options are essentially between 70% and 99.9. .9. By default, we go with 95%, and that's pretty much the standard. Um, unless you have a good reason to change this or you're trying to control better for type 2 error, this is definitely going to be uh, the ideal option. Basically, uh, how I typically turn on my results in cross tabs is I will use um, the colors as well as the significant pop-ups. And I typically like to see the test names and p-values just so that I have something to validate with. Now, whether you, tur you turn on this option for all results or for only significant results really depends on kind of how much detail you need about some of these analyses. So if I turn on for all results, for example, and I hover over this cell, not only do you get the significant associations, but you get the insignificant associations as well and the tests that were run. And just something to be aware of in terms of display. Um, when you're running pairwise testing, you can actually turn on column letters. Basically, this can just make it a little bit easier to uh, identify what the significant relationship is. Because when you turn column letters off, for example, you'll need to actually hover over the cell to get the detailed associations. You'll just know, for example, that the 18 cell is significant with something. Another benefit to using the column letters is that it actually allows you to use a second confidence level. So when I turn on the second confidence level, the lowercase letters will actually denote the 
um, second confidence level cutoff, and the uppercase letters will indicate the um, original. If you are in a scenario where you're looking to actually validate some of these tests that occur in MarketSite, um, there's actually a bunch of ways that you can do this. I think the easiest one to show for the demonstration here is going to be to validate a two-proportion z-test. And for my needs, I'm really just going to use this online calculator. You can actually use any stats program, though, if you're actually looking to validate. Um, and basically, this is what's happening here. Uh, if I hover over my 18 cell, you'll see that I have a significant association between my under 18 age group as well as this 25 to 34 age group. Now, if I wanted to try to replicate this result of 0.008, I would basically just need my count for this cell as well as the sample size for this column. So in this case, it's 10 and 88. So my sample proportion is 10 and 88. And the significant association would be with my 25 to 34 group. So that would be 13 and 43. So again, in this case, since I'm using a confidence level of 95%, that is a significance level cutoff of 0.05. So basically, one minus your confidence level. And again, MarketSite will run two-tailed tests by default. When I calculate my p-value in this case, you'll see that I actually get 0 0.00758, which is just suggesting that MarketSite rounds to the third decimal place. Again, that's just a way to validate your test to ensure that the stat testing is occurring the way that you expect it to. So now we can review some of the different test options, um, and specifically with regard to contrast versus pairwise testing. So by default, we're going to have pairwise testing displayed, which essentially means that every cell is being compared with every other cell within the same row. If I switch this to contrast testing, I actually will lose the ability to have um, column letters turned on just because of the way the testing occurs now. Basically, now each individual cell is being tested against the remainder of the row. So in this case, you know, we have that same uh, 10 out of 88 proportion and basically the aggregate of the remainder of these rows for that second value, if you wanted to validate this test as well. So the next thing we're going to try to cover here is uh, how to handle kind of your different weighting options. If you choose to use a weight variable in any of your analyses, just understand um, how some of the stats calculations occur and how you can handle the different scenarios. So if I come to my weighting tab here, I'm just going to grab a weight variable from my data set. Uh, this weight2 variable here is actually just going to make uh, the proportion of my males and females in this data set even. So if I turn it on or off, you can just see how this weight variable is affecting this distribution here. Now where uh, this becomes important with regard to stat testing is actually what base you ultimately use. So if you are using a weight variable, typically you're okay using your weighted base, which essentially means you're using this 309 and this other 309. If you choose to use unweighted base, it's basically going to use um, the unweighted base that's not being displayed here, and it's going to be using the weighted counts for the stat testing. And the final option that we have here is effective base. This is typically useful in scenarios where you know that your weight variable is contributing a lot to a significant proportion adjustment. So let's say, for whatever reason, I only could collect a sample of 100 males, and I ended up with 400 females, and I apply a weight variable so that these two distributions end up being even. That significant proportion adjustment can ultimately have pretty dramatic effects on the stat testing that occurs. So in those types of scenarios, we typically recommend that you would use something like an effective base. Um, basically, effective base just better controls for that significant proportion adjustment that occurs. Um, so you can ultimately kind of end up with more validated stat testing results. <laughs>
Um, some other options that I kind of failed to cover initially are just some of these other stat test options here. Uh, to see what some of these things do in more detail, it would be better to reference the help section because they do affect certain calculations that occur uh, within the MarketBite platform. So, uh, for example, enforcing stricter data sufficiency rules will basically just uh, adjust the threshold for when stat testing occurs. Uh, the rule of thumb to go by is typically as long as your cell counts are above five, you should have no issue with a stat test not occurring. Um, but there are some other conditions that can apply to that. And generally, if you do want to enforce a stricter data sufficiency rule, which will just make it so that um, your stat testing will not occur uh, unless your cell counts reach a certain threshold, uh, this would be a good option to use. So the next thing I want to cover here is indexing. This is actually just being covered again because it's a fairly underutilized function that people can actually get a lot of use out of. So if I actually turn on my show index on column percent, and I'm going to index to total in this case, we can kind of go over the interpretation of um, how to actually use this index here. So when I index on a column percent, in this case, uh, for my female group for under 20,000 for an income, I have 114. This would suggest to me that in this sample, 14% more females responded to this question than males. And basically how you can validate this check for this index is I can use my female percent compared to the total percent and then multiply by 100 so that I get a solid value or a whole value. And you can see it truncates. So I end up with the value of 114. So it can definitely just be used as a good way to identify those proportion differences. All right, so the final thing that we're going to cover today is how to handle your MRVs and grid stat tests, and just things to be aware of. Um, just know that if you are going to try to validate equations with uh, a multiple response variable, it's going to be a little bit more challenging to do just because um, doing stat testing on a multiple response variable is actually a very specific kind of condition. Um, and that's just because multiple response variables have overlapping categories. So an individual can respond um, to the same variable with multiple options. So just to show you an example here, I'm going to grab my cell phone features MRV. And in columns, I can just grab some demographics again. So essentially understanding that, um, for example, the question in this case is, does your cell phone have the following features? You can actually select multiple options. So basically just handling that overlap of the sample uh, is going to be different in terms of how stat testing occurs. You can still see that it's going to be a two-proportion z-test when I have counts being displayed. Just know that um, handling the overlap with regard to how you handle variance um, and pooled variance in these uh, equations is going to change. If I come back to the statistics tab here, uh, basically this is a scenario where you are going to use the non-mutually exclusive op option. Because in this case, um, you do have samples that overlap. Now this mutually exclusive scenario is actually going to be for scenarios where you have grid variables. So if I clear my cross tab again, and I scroll down to my grid variables category, I can take my recommend grid, and you can see I actually end up with a lot of significance here. So in this scenario, I will actually want to use mutually exclusive. And the reason for this is because each column in this case 
is an individual question. So you want to make sure that in this case, uh, there is actually going to be no overlap. Each individual respondent e answered uh, the, the question to the individual column. So you can see that actually eliminated a lot of the significant associations that were being displayed. So do understand that this is going to have pretty dramatic effects on your stat testing, so this is going to be something you want to be aware of. And then if you do have scenarios like this as well, where uh, you find that um, you're getting a lot of significance and you really want to just kind of narrow this down um, to the most significance results, one way you could handle that is just by making your p-value cutoff stricter. Okay, so I think with that I've pretty much covered everything on the agenda, so we're going to open it up to questions. Um, and anything that we can't answer on this call or might be too detailed for the context of this call, um, we can obviously answer via email at a later date or set up a go-to meeting session if we feel like it involves uh, a lot more detailed explanations. Uh, so the first question I see here is how should I approach a scenario where I have many significant cells in one cross tab? I think that's actually the scenario that we just went over. Um, so basically, if you do find that you have a scenario where you have a lot of significance displaying in a cross tab, one way to handle this would be simply to just uh, make your p-value cutoff stricter. Does market site test significance up and down a column or only across the row? Um, so at this point in time, it is true, we really only do uh, testing across a row. Um, so if you did need some sort of vertical stat test to occur down the column, I would say the best way to handle that would be to flip your variables. Um, and if you flip your variables, you'll ultimately get the stat testing that you want to occur. And the last question is, does market site handle stat testing when columns are nested? Uh, yes, it does. So basically, the thing to be aware of, and I can just show you a quick example here. So if I actually nest, let's say, my gender groups within my age groups, you'll see that the stat testing still occurs across the row. All right. So I think with that, we're going to end today's session. Thank you very much for your time and attending the session today. If you have any further follow-up or questions, you can always feel free to reach out to me and quan at marketsite.com, or you can contact customer service at marketsite.com. If you feel like it's more appropriately answered uh, in the context of a call, you can also give us a call.